John Kirkby is the founder and international director of Christians Against Poverty, or CAP, as many people know it. Yep. Founded 21 years ago in the UK yeah. and 10 years ago here in New Zealand. Yeah. John, you're back in New Zealand to celebrate the, uh, the first decade. Wonderful to have yeah. you here and, and thank you for joining us. Oh, very, very grateful, yeah. yeah. Fantastic to be here to celebrate what God's done. Yeah, amazing. Take us back well, beyond the beginning right, of, of, okay. of Christians Against Poverty, your own story of success and failure which mm. led you to found this organisation. Yeah, people often say when did CAP start? I think it started. Uh, around about 1992 before we really got going in 96. Yeah, I'd um, yeah, I'd had a very difficult early life. Um, father died when I was 18, my mum was sectioned under mental health. I was deemed to be special needs at school, left school really early. Um, quite a troubled young man uh, with my father gravely ill. Not a very great period in my life. And then I got working in the finance industry. I used to be a door-to-door -door loan salesman and collector, ironically. Uh, was reasonably successful in the world's eyes, certainly from where I'd come I was successful, but underneath the veneer of success. Um, yeah, I was a very, very broken guy really, really struggling with life, <clears throat> very empty, lonely. Uh, yeah, married with two children, but basically really struggling. Managed to get into debt and failed businesses and then basically, as you hinted, lost everything. My marriage, had to leave home, ended up about as close to destitute as I would ever want. Ended up living in just one room with two little kiddies, seven and four. Um, and that's really where CAP started, because in the middle of that, I met these people who introduced me to this guy called Jesus, and upon that, yeah. my life began to pivot, but quite a journey. So hitting rock bottom there and, and yeah. finding faith in those circumstances, your yeah. response to that, yeah. to say, well, okay, God, what do you yeah. want me to do uh, with yeah. my life? And I mean, that's, that's where, where CAP originally Came started. Up. Yeah, um, me and my wife, Lizzie, um, often joke. So um, I remember saying to God when I was in that desperate situation, um, I mean, really desperate, so Christmas day with baking sandwiches, putting things back on a supermarket, people judging me as a father, my kids not having the right stuff to wear. I remember saying, if you get me through, <laughs> I'll do anything you want. Now, I don't say that quite so often now. So four years later when me and Liz were about to get married and things had turned around and I felt there was a real sense of God saying, okay, Johnny boy, let's go help the poor. So me and my wife often laugh that his timing was either impeccable or disastrous because we were just about to get married, but actually we knew straight away this was what God wanted to do. So we got married, came back from a honeymoon, sat in a small home office, someone gave us a few pounds went out into the streets to help people, and that's where the journey of CAP really began. So going from somebody who, uh, well, sold financial plans to people that yeah. eventually got them into crippling debt to saying, <laughs> hey, actually, <laughs> let's reverse this, let's pe help yep. people get out of that debt spiral. Yeah. Um, I think I'm a poacher turned gamekeeper, or a gamekeeper turned poacher. But it was really interesting, you know, how God uses all things. I would never have envisaged that anybody having done what I would have done would have been able to begin a debt counselling charity, but actually when you think about it, who better? So not only did I understand what it was like to be in debt, but the innovation and creativity that God had given me that I used in the finance industry to design products, I basically used to design an ultimate product which got myself on the journey to being out of debt. And it was from that innovative way that I developed for myself became the basis of CAP. So my understanding of the finance industry, my knowledge of how it worked, my knowledge of what it was like to be poor and to be massively in debt. Actually, I was probably the most qualified person. Um, but hey, I had no idea what God was going to do. We just went out to help poor and needy people. And yeah, the rest is phenomenal what God's done. So from those early beginnings, yeah. just, just setting up an office and saying, <laughs> well, you know, I'm a Christian. I'd like to do something about yeah. poverty in yeah, the UK. It, it sounds bizarre. Every time everyone says that, I'm saying that is actually what we did. Yes, yeah. however bizarre it may seem. That's what we did. Now, this is built into a series of partnerships, not just in the UK, but yeah, in various places around the world. Around yeah. the world. Uh, what was the tipping point, do you think, from a struggling ministry to saying, yeah. actually, God is in this, and I think we've got some, some really positive momentum? Yeah, um, yeah, I think probably the tipping point for me and for Lizzie was kind of relatively early on. So, yeah, we hoped it would do well, but at the end of the day, we didn't really know. Um, our story is one of quite traumatic first few years. We had very little. We ended up poorer than the people who were helping them, and it was quite a story. But actually, the turning point came when we started to see these people not only find freedom from debt, but we started to see 
you know, people coming to church and finding Christ, we started to realize that just maybe we had a little bit of a key that would introduce poor and needy people to our Lord and Savior. And then once we started seeing people getting saved and discipled into our small home church, literally we're gone. Yeah. So that was it. So we basically committed that if it just stayed like that, we would do it. So that was the first tipping point of you know, determination to do it. Um, I'm really glad we got to that point. And also the Lord did very much protect us from what the true price was gonna be. Because if he hadn't have done, I don't think we'd have carried on. Mm. But we just carried on one step at a time. And in the UK, it took us 10 years to get to our first 50 centers. Um, and then from there, we then felt confident enough to really expand it around the world. And obviously now, yeah, 10 years after that, it's, yeah, tenfold increase in 10 years. So it's exponential. But at the end of the day, it's the same God same passion for the poor, same love for the church, that God somehow in his remarkable grace has allowed to be as big as it is, not only here in New Zealand, but around the world. Now, your own story is, is told in the book, Nevertheless, which is. is available from the uh, the CAP website, free yes, of charge. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the remarkable part is, I think, what happened next. Yes, your own story, a story yeah. of being set free financially and yep. also spiritually. Yeah. But the way in which this has been replicated in the lives of tens of thousands yeah. of people all over the world, yeah. in some ways, the story continues to write itself. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I've, I've met some clients here, hearing their stories already, have been here a week, and yeah, same stories, same amazing people, same phenomenal church, same fantastic God. I mean, it never ceases to astonish me of what God can do with you know, ordinary people that get behind a, an extraordinary vision that's following just this incredible sense that I know Jesus has of love of the poor and desire that his church should make a difference in communities. So it's, it's just phenomenal to see it everywhere in the world. But here in New Zealand, um, yeah, I mean, we're good, but we're not this good. I mean, the, what we've seen here in 10 years leaves me, I mean, I'm used to God turning up, I'm used to miracles, I'm used to things going amazingly well, but nothing could have prepared us for what we've seen here in New Zealand. It is absolutely stunning. The way the New Zealand church responded when we first arrived 10 years ago, the way New Zealand has welcomed us and said, let's do this. The phenomenal openness of your churches to say, come on, let's work together. Um, it's really exceptional and stunning and amazing. And the fruit is, yeah, oh, nearly a thousand people have found Christ in the last 10 years. Well over 1,500 are going debt free. It's just been amazing to see. and. We ain't finished yet. You know, we've a long way to go over the next 10 years. Well, well certainly lots of challenges ahead. And yeah. as we've seen recently, this is very much a political issue for us here in New Zealand as well. Yeah. The problem of families that are trapped in poverty, in particular children who are trapped in a cycle of yeah. poverty. Yeah. Is there a difference? Because, I mean, people must ask you all the time, John, what's <laughs> your secret? Because is there, a, is there something which is different with, with CAP, with Christians Against Poverty, which is, is yeah. unique? compared to other perhaps yeah. financial mm. advice agencies? Yeah, I mean, first of all, anybody helping anybody uh, manage their money or get out of debt, yeah. well done. So please, many as we can, as fast as we can. I think the, the unique thing for us ultimately has to be who we are in Christ. Um, we only work with churches, uh, no church, no Christians against poverty. We are uh, confident in our faith. We're confident in what God has, uh, has led us to do. So practically, in terms of the quality of the services that we offer, so our debt counselling, it really is world class. I mean, it is the very best system that hundreds of thousands of people have been through around the world that really does sustainably relieve poverty. So the actual product is exceptional. Um, and that's not unique, but it's a starting point. But the unique nature of it is the phenomenal frontline workers we have. So, you know, here in New Zealand, we have 100 frontline workers working through 60 centres with our debt centres, our job clubs, release groups and life skills, and they are the difference. Um, I was yeah, with some very senior politicians recently and asked me the question, so what's, the, what's the secret? And basically, people change people. Yeah. Products don't change people, churches change people, Jesus changes people, and it is the change in people that results in their transformation. Yeah. And somehow God, somehow, has taken a normal bloke who had a heart for the poor with a wife who believed in him and now thousands around the world have got behind it. But it is Jesus is the difference. Jesus is the answer. Uh, Isaiah 58 is a life application scripture for me. And you know, the promise is if you spend yourself on behalf of the poor and needy and meet the needs of the oppressed, and it says, then your light will rise in the darkness, your night will become like noonday. The Lord will strengthen your frame. He will provide for you in a sun scorched land. You will be like a well watered garden. I mean, we live out that, those promises, but we spend ourselves on behalf of the poor. This is really important. And then it goes on to say that 
in the message version it says, you'll be known as a place that can fix anything. And my passion, our passion has been that the church would be known as a place that it can fix anything. And then it goes on to say, make the communities livable again. And I think for me and Lizzie, forget all the, yeah, all the other stuff. The fact that there are people alive today in communities around the world that somewhere in the world today, six people will find Christ through CAP. 15 people will go debt free. Six people have been unemployed for two years will find a job. 10 people who've had addictions and life control will find freedom. Yeah. Um, do you know that's enough for us and it'll be enough for us until the day we go to glory. Mm -hmm. This is about Jesus, it's his church. And I believe that we should be at the forefront of social change. I believe that's where we should be. I think we should be doing things really well and we should do it with quality and professionalism, but with love and compassion and care. And there's no limit to the difference that you can see if you make sure it remains focused on the one who started it, which of course is Jesus Christ. Some wonderful stories and statistics to do yeah. with success and people set free. Yeah. But in some ways, the definition of success is yeah. different here in this yeah. upside down kingdom of God world. Oh, I mean, you're, you're not kidding. You're a financial organization which yep. sets people free from debt and poverty. Every yep. other financial organization, well, most of them at least, are saying, please borrow money because we'd quite like to live off the interest that you pay yeah. for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Encouraging people to take risks and to, to live beyond their means yeah. is in some ways what makes our economic system work. Yeah. You're working very much the reverse of that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, our CAP money, which is our money education program, uh, is in all our countries. It's basically the fence at the top of the cliff. So we're helping thousands of Kiwis manage their money better to learn how to save, budget and spend. Um, that's a phenomenal service. We, we're, we're helping people to live a life without debt. Um, and I think the kind of message that we're saying to the clients that come to us is um, that you can, you can get yourself out of debt. So we don't pay people's debts off. Yeah. We don't give money away. We mm. give a system and support that enables them to get out of debt. So it means that what we do is sustainable. So we do a lot of research about people who go debt free. Where are they three years after they've gone debt free? And the, the statistics, they're probably too good to be. It can't be this good. Yeah. We've got 80% of our clients five years after they've been with us and being debt free are still living within a budget and still debt free because someone trained them and showed them that you can live within your means, that there is a way to save, that you don't need all the things that the world says you need. Mm. So intermingled with our message of hope around debts is a, a, a different way to live, which is the way that I'm sure God would want us all to live. And you know, it doesn't just affect poor people. I mean, certainly you, you mentioned hope, and in many ways the story of, of CAP is a story not so much of money, uh, <laughs> but of, of hope. That is the commodity yeah. which you trade in. Yeah. And I imagine a lot of people who get to that point, that, that low point in their life that you reached yeah. all those years ago, hope is the commodity that they've yeah. run out of. Yes, mm -hmm. they're poor financially, yeah. but that poverty of spirit, that lack of hope, they're not seeing any way of changing their circumstances yeah. because they have become overwhelmed. Yeah. Those are the people that you meet. Yeah. Has totally, there yeah. any, ever been anybody that you know of that was beyond hope, beyond help? Look at me. So I didn't, if, I didn't have cap, I just had an idea. Yeah. But I've met Jesus and I met some Christians who believed in me. Um, yeah, I believe that no life is beyond the redeeming power of Christ. I believe that whatever you've done or not done or lived or mistakes you've made, that it's not the end, that there's always hope. And that is really our essential message that we carry out into the homes across New Zealand. We walk into some desperate places. It's difficult to comprehend unless you've been there what it's like. People say, well, surely they can, and then they have some list of things people can do to change their lives. Let me tell you, there is no hope. It is hopeless because there is no hope and it is hopeless. If you do not know what to do, if you cannot negotiate with creditors like we can and get interest reduced and stopped, if you can't set a simple budget up and, and show people what to do, there is no hope. So with CAP it is always with hope, but not just hope practically. We carry the hope of Christ in us. We carry the hope of the local church where people can find community and restoration. So it's not just financial hope or it's not just helping people get a job if they've been out of work for three years or be released from addictions. It's always hope. Um, and of course our faith is important to us, but we help anybody. We wanna help people first, show the love of Christ first, then share the love of Christ, and then believe that no life is bonded to dreaming power. And I stand here today personally as a testimony that that's true, but now hundreds of thousands of families around the world mm -hmm. testify that there is always hope. And that's our message to the poor in your nation and anywhere 
where we will go. And in some ways, these, these stories, these testimonies, this is part of the hope of saying, well, actually, follow me. <laughs> I know the way. We've seen families just like yours just like who you. are now debt free. Yeah. And being able to say that to people who can't see yeah. any other way forward, yeah. Yeah. at the beginning, I'm sure it, it doesn't seem possible, but story yeah. oh, after yeah. story of families that have yeah. been set free and transformed. So just this uh, yesterday, eight Kiwis went debt free through our work. We celebrated each one. We named them. We praised God. We shouted for them. We they celebrated, and 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 that is phenomenal. And it's almost like if they can, you can. Um, and this judgment that we either inadvertently or directly put on the poor, that sense of what you've done and what you haven't done, you know. You're lazy. You're not working. You're Man. making bad choices Man. with your money, etc. The church is perhaps yeah. known historically more for being judgmental yeah, than, than being compassionate. Seriously, you know, if you know, if you've made a few mistakes, what do you want? Someone to believe in you, and and say it's okay. You know, I've sat down with women who've been in a situation with nearly selling themselves on the street. What do they need? Somebody to judge them for their mistakes, or do they need somebody to put their arm around them and say, look, there is hope? And we do speak to that judgment. Um, you know, people who are listening or watching this, listen, you know, just check your heart out. Check your heart out. Stop judging people. I used to put things back on a supermarket and people used to, in my earshot, say things like, look at him, he can't even add up. What kind of father is he? Listen, I didn't need that. I needed somebody to come up to me and say, you look like you're struggling, John. How can I help? It's okay. And that's where my redemption come from. So this judgment, we do speak against that with understanding where it comes from. But don't judge poor people. You do not know what you'd do if you were there. Yeah. You know, people who lose their job, people who get terminally ill, people whose wives and children get ill, people who get made redundant, people who go sick. You know, they're not, no one gets up in the morning wanting to be poor. Let's yeah. be compassionate and care for people. And that's when a world will sit up and listen to you. The, the stories, the testimonies themselves are contagious in a positive way as <laughs> yeah. well because I suppose everybody wants to be part of something exciting that God is doing, yeah. like, like what is happening through the work yeah. of CAP internationally yeah. and, and here in New Zealand. Yeah. For people that are listening to this or watching yeah. this at the moment, how can b people be part yeah. of the arts, a part of the miracle that God okay. is doing through the ministry? Uh, first of all, just come and find out about us. Um, really, really relax. Come and judge for yourself. Come and have a proper look. Uh, come and get a free copy of uh, Nevertheless, uh, my autobiography. It's on the website, capnz.org. Come and have a read. Uh, yeah, don't stop halfway through the book. Keep reading to the end, yeah. although you know the story ends yeah, well. Yeah, no spoilers, but there's a happy <laughs> Dude, ending, right? Seriously, yeah. there, is a, there needs to be, trust yeah. me. Yeah. Have a look at the website, see what we do. Uh, primarily, we, we want to open more centres across New Zealand. Uh, we want to work, we only work with churches. We want more churches, so hey, come and have a look at what we do. We also need people to join in to be support workers. We need volunteers at our offices here in Auckland. And of course, we need people to get behind us financially. Cap New Zealand is paid for by New Zealand people. We have thousands of regular givers and we do need people to get behind it. And also, don't be confused by how well we're doing. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. You know, we want to double over the next 10 years. We want to make sure that the church here in New Zealand is at the forefront of social change. And as I've seen in the UK, with 600 centres and a huge national network, our influence nationally is where you see some phenomenal things. And I'm believing for the same here in New Zealand. So we ain't finished yet. We have a long way to go. And in the same way, 10 years ago when I arrived, I needed people to get involved. No change. We need people to get involved. So please find out about If anything, us. with the, the housing crisis that we've had here in New Zealand and with uh, the situation facing many struggling yeah. families, poverty in New Zealand homes is worse than it's ever been. The exciting thing is, though, yeah. through organisations with the work that CAP is doing, right. uh, hope has never been stronger. Yeah. Opportunities to really tackle this to do something cool. about it in our own communities in our own lifetime. Andrew you're inspiring me you're inspiring me to go again and again and again and that's what we do and I also just want to say that the people here involved in CAP New Zealand um, it's humbling to spend time with them it's astonishing to spend time with our centre staff our church leaders the pastors our supporters our volunteers our workers here in New Zealand um, just humbling to see a phenomenal bunch of people who, from God, not from me, have got this passion and vision to see this thing grow and to see what God's done over the last 10 years. Um, yeah, amazing and stunning. Well, we certainly look forward to seeing what God is going to do next. John Cookery, right. it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.